a new PlayStation State of Play is rumored to be coming soon. Plus two new game-changing patents that might just change the way gamers play in the future on the PlayStation 5. And Days Gone 2 finally gets the reason why it was cancelled. All this and much much more in today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Welcome to the Saltiest Gaming News Channel, your number one source for PlayStation news and rumors on YouTube. Before we get into today's first story, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. In today's first story, it's been a while since PlayStation had its last state of play. Its last state of play was held on October 27, 2021, and it was kind of a letdown, let's be honest. I remember remember it clear as day going into it with kind of low expectations and then even with those low expectations I was met with disappointment needless to say it's been quite a while since we had an amazing state of play and to be honest we're due for one if rumors are to be believed there's going to be a state of play in February we've officially entered a new year so happy new year to everybody if I haven't said that to you guys hope you guys have a fantastic year full of gaming we have a lot of games that are coming out in the year 2022 to name a few we got god of war ragnarok horizon forbidden west is coming out in february and gran turismo 7 hogwarts legacy we got forspoken all kinds of games that playstation has ties to according to this insider quote unquote and take this with a grain of salt twitter user account ngt who previously leaked the title and images from quantic dream star wars eclipse recently in a q of a on twitter they're asked if they had any details surrounding a playstation event for early 2022 that user replied stating it's coming and that they would have a lot of information to deliver once the event is announced tom henderson an industry insider as well typically he deals with call of duty and the likes but he's been expanding out this is what he had to say on twitter tom henderson the current rumor is that the next sony event looks like it could be february based on this month's media events and past playstation dates it'll probably be a state of play but it has potential to be a pretty big one imo now i'm a guy guy of detail and based off of what I read he didn't get any details from other people he just said this is speculation on his part it could be in February based on this month's media events and past PlayStation date so that just sounds like pure speculation to me when it comes to February it's next month and we have the release of Horizon Forbidden West I feel like if PlayStation does an event after that game releases then they can drum up excitement for other games that are going to be coming out like Gran Turismo and God of War we still need a release date for God of War. You have games like Forspoken and the likes, and it'd be nice to get some announcements on games that we haven't heard about because PlayStation historically holds back the information on a lot of games to release that throughout the year, you know, scattered about like salt on the plate. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think we're going to see a state of play in February? And what would you like to see in the state of play? In the months of February and March, we got games like Sifu, Horizon Forbidden West, GT7, and more coming out. So there's a lot to choose from. Let's talk about it in other news if you've been following the channel you would know that i love to get into delorean and look into the future of gaming on the playstation 5 platform and we do this via patents because patents are filed early before product hits and it's new stuff so what do we have in the bag this time well sony wants you to stop sucking pause at PlayStation 5 games with this new patent. If you've ever struggled to figure out what exactly you're not doing well in a video game, keep dying at Dark Souls, or you keep getting blocked at the rim on NBA 2K, well, Sony recently filed a new coaching patent that aims to train players in video games they are playing. Specifically, the patent describes graphical overlays, audio cues, and instant replays that users can access during gameplay, which may help them to improve their skills and to stop sucking. Now, how could this work, Salty, you say? Well, let's read a tidbit from the patent itself. The method includes identifying a gameplay event during gameplay by a user. The gameplay event is triggered as falling below skill threshold. The method further includes generating a recording for a window of time for gameplay even and processing game telemetry from the recording of the gameplay event. So this piggybacks off of other patents that we've talked about when it comes to AI, machine learning, and just big brother overall watching everything you do because this is just another example of it. it's going to analyze your gameplay to the level of how much you suck and then it's going to give you
you feedback based off of video. So let's just be honest, you're gonna have no privacy when it comes to your gaming. I think that we've lost all privacy anyway when we have our smartphones on us at all times that have microphones and, and likes, but I digress. But what do you guys think about this potentially coaching you out of not being so bad at certain video games? Would you like something like this? You think it's kind of overbearing and not necessary? Let's talk about it. That other patent that I was talking about would allow Sony players to scan real world objects into games. If you guys have been keeping up with the channel last week, the PlayStation VR 2 was officially revealed at CES and my God, it's looking spectacular. But a new patent was filed that might make it even better. It looks like PlayStation VR 2 users might have the ability to scan real world items and objects and generate them as virtual objects in a 360 viewing virtual reality game with properties chosen by the user. A mock-up for the same patents application can be seen below in this picture. So potentially you scan this lamp into your game and then you can take a look at it and you know choose what you guys want to do with it. If you guys haven't heard, Dreams is a game where you can make games and Dreams has a VR part of it and, and I, I would wonder if you could just scan objects in and put them into games like Dreams. That would be insane. You could build your own house, move things around, like see what things would look like. Hey, this is my actual bed in my room. Let's, you know, shift the bed over here. We're gonna put this over there. The options and the possibilities of this are, are limitless, to be honest. This could be a huge leap forward when it comes to VR. We've already stated thoroughly on the Saltiest Gaming Podcast. Go check that out. I'll put a link in the description how advanced the PlayStation VR 2 is in terms of specs. It's top of the line. It has eye scanning. It has vibrations in your head to keep you from getting motion sick. It is just going to be fantastic, but the option to scan real life objects into games or into other things could be potentially game changing. But what do you guys think of this patent? Potentially be able to scan your whole life into a game. What would you use this for if you could think about something in VR you could potentially use this object or this patent in? Let's talk about it. And finally, in the last bit of news, Days Gone 2. We're not going to be getting a Days Gone 2. Well, probably forever, but for a very long time. Shout out to my guy, David Jaffe. He had the developers from Ben Studio on for an interview because Ghost of Tsushima ended up selling 8 million copies and was praised all over the internet. And that caused the developers over there as a past director of Ben Studio to tweet out that Days Gone sold just about as much and he didn't see any thanks or praise or any of that stuff. So they decided to go on David Jaffe's channel and kind of clear the air as to what was the issue behind Days Gone not getting a sequel. And what it comes down to is one simple fact and the fact that Sean Layden greenlit this IP. He was there when it was started and when it was completed. When Sean Layden left PlayStation in 2019 to be replaced by Jim Ryan, according to director Jeff Ross, this was the nail in the proverbial coffin because Sean Layden would have likely been able to allow for a sequel to happen. But according to the director, Jim Ryan was not on board for a sequel to this game. And that's probably because of its reception, not its sales. It had a pretty low Metacritic score. As noted, Ross is gone now and it's unclear what Ben Studio is working on. They are working on a new IP in an open world. The first IP since Siphon Filter. Before that, uh, the team worked on other series for PlayStation. We'll see what Ben Studio has in the pipeline. Hopefully they'll get this new game out and then they can put out Days Gone 2. I'll just keep my lucky rabbit foot and uh, yeah, I won't hold my breath. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the real reason why Days Gone 2 was canceled or not greenlit. Let's talk about it. But anyway, that's it for today's edition of the saltiest PlayStation News Report. Sorry about the voice. I am recovering from, I think, COVID, but we won't get into that. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icons. You can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Have fun gaming and as always, stay salty, my friends.